This is Jochen Rindt, the only Formula 1 driver to ever win a championship after their death. Imagine the pinnacle of racing glory, the split second when victory is seized and a driver becomes a legend. For Jochen Rindt, that moment came under the German sky at Hockenheim, a track known for its high speed demands and intense battles. For Jochen Rindt, the brilliant Austrian whose life was a mosaic of speed, triumph and tragedy, Hockenheim's victory lap would be his last. This is the story of Jochen Rindt, Formula One's only posthumous champion. Jochen Rindt. Jochen, Jochen Rindt. Rindt wins the race from Brabham on the last... Jochen Rindt's story doesn't start with the roar of a racetrack. It begins with the echo of a different kind of thunder. Born in Mainz, Germany in 1942, right in the thick of the Second World War, Rindt's first challenges were not on the track, but in life itself. I mean, picture this. There's a city under siege, air raid sirens, a childhood amidst chaos. By the time he was one, Rint's parents were taken by the war, leaving him an orphan. It's the kind of start that doesn't promise a future world champion. But here's the twist. Rint's story was not one of defeat. His grandparents from Graz, Austria, stepped in and offered him a second chance, far from his war-torn birthplace. So you might think, okay, he's set for a quiet life in Austria, right? Well, not exactly. This kid had other plans. This was a boy who lived on one philosophy. If you're not on the edge, you're taking up too much space. And sure enough, that space often extended to the streets of Graz, where he'd test the limits of speed and occasionally the patience of the local law enforcement. He had speed in his heart, and soon he had a steering wheel in his hands. And before you know it, he's not just a kid, he's Jochen Rindt, a name that's going to mean something on the racetracks. So how does a young boy touched by tragedy turn into Formula One's rising star? Well, that's where this story gets interesting. Imagine standing at a crossroads. The first path is safe, it's familiar, but the other is faster, but every step could be your last. For Jochen Rindt, speed was a siren call he couldn't ignore, even when it screamed of danger. The international motor racing world first took notice on the 18th of May 1964, when Rindt clinched the London Trophy at Crystal Palace, outpacing legends like Graham Hill. But it wasn't just single-seater races that caught his fancy. Rindt also carved his name into the 24 hour of Le Mans history books, taking victory in a Ferrari 250 LM, a moment of triumph that tasted as sweet as it was fleeting. 1965 was a year of juxtaposition for Rint. He joined Cooper in Formula 1, yet he was shadowed by the team's declining fortunes. Due to an uncompetitive car, he continued to race in Formula 2, honing his craft and building his reputation, whilst also fulfilling his Formula 1 duties. In 1968, a pivotal year for Rint, he found himself at Brabham, having garnered attention from nearly every other team in the circuit, but there were a few notable exceptions, including Lotus. His debut at the season opener in South Africa was a remarkable display of his burgeoning talent. Letting Graham Hill come home in second place behind Clark. Amidst the fierce competition, Rint showcased his prowess, clinching third place, a position earned in part due to a late retirement by Jackie Stewart and a thrilling chase that saw him closing in on Graham Hill, who finished in second. This race, however, was marked by a poignant undercurrent that was won by Jim Clark in a Lotus, a close friend and mentor of Rint. Unbeknownst to them, it would be Clark's final victory in Formula 1. His tragic death, just three months later, was at a Formula 2 race in Hockenheim, driving a Lotus 48, and it cast a shadow over the racing world. For Rint, it was a profound loss, not just of a friend, but of a guiding light in the perilous world of racing. This event, a blizzard of triumph and tragedy, was emblematic of Rint's career, a path marked by dazzling highs and harrowing lows, where each victory was tinged with the stark reality of the dangers they faced. In 1969, the stakes were higher than ever. Rint had managed to join Lotus and was effectively a replacement for the legendary two-time Formula One champion Clark, and he would partner the reigning champion, Graham Hill. Joining Team Lotus was a gamble, not just on his career, but in his very life. His friend and de facto manager, Bernie Eccleston, acknowledged the inherent risk. They knew Brabham might have been the safer bet, but the allure of Lotus' speed was irresistible, offering Rint a tangible shot at the Formula One World Championship. And Rint summed it up best himself, at Lotus, I can either be a world champion or die. This wasn't hyperbole. The inherent dangers of the sport were ever present, a shadow looming over every racer's dream, especially if you're in a Lotus. The Spanish Grand Prix would soon confirm Rint's beliefs. In a heart-stopping moment, both he and teammate Graham Hill suffered a catastrophic high-speed crash. The cause? A failure of the suspension-mounted wings on their cars, a technical oversight that nearly cost them both their lives put two cars on the track, identical in every way, but one has a chance of killing you and the other doesn't. Any racer would choose the safe one, it's common sense, but edge the dangerous car ahead by just 5% in speed and watch the decision shift. Suddenly, the racer will choose the more dangerous car every single time. And choose he did, 
Rink got back in the Lotus and achieved a maiden Grand Prix win at Watkins Glen. He won $50,000, the largest monetary prize in Formula 1 history at that time. But this one was bittersweet, marred by his teammate Graham Hill's horrific high-speed accident. Yet it was a testament to his unyielding spirit and a prelude to his ultimate challenge, the 1970 Formula 1 season. Come 1970, Jochen Rint stood among the pinnacle of his career, the lead driver at Lotus, commanding the innovative Lotus 72, the first Formula 1 car boasting side pods. Yet a twist of fate saw him switch cars for the Monaco Grand Prix, a decision that set the stage for a race that was forever etched in the history books of Formula 1. Monaco 1970 became the scene of Rint's defining triumph. Trailing in fifth for most of the race, he unleashed a relentless pursuit, shattering lap records, narrowing the gap lap by lap. In the final lap, it was laden with suspense. Rint's pressure led Jack Brabham to a fateful error, allowing Rint to snatch the victory that seemed almost lost. But 1970 was also a year marred by tragedy. The racing community was rocked by the deaths of Bruce McLaren and Piers Courage, both close to Rint. Within mere weeks, these losses weighed heavily on Rint. He was now a father, and it sparked rumours of his retirement. It emits personal turmoil and the ever-present spectre of danger. Rint's resolve in the face of adversity never wavered. He clinched four consecutive victories, a testament to the spirit that refused to be dimmed. Rint once noted, Maybe I'll not live to reach the age of 40, but until that time, I'll have experienced more things in life than anybody else. These words would prove hauntingly prophetic. Sadly, Rint did not reach the age of 40, as disaster struck two races after his German triumph. During practice for the Italian Grand Prix at Monza, Rint's Lotus inexplicably ploughed through the guardrail at Parabolica. He was not wearing a crotch strap, and his seatbelt buckle caused fatal throat injuries. Rint was leading the championship, and his points tally would not be overtaken. He was world champion. The normal continuum of human events has a beginning and an end. Jochen Rint is dead. He will have won the world championship. The manner of his winning it illustrates the randomness of human experience. Thanks for watching this video on Jochen Rint. Formula One's only posthumous champion. If you've enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, if you do want to watch more Formula One content, my video on the Matra V12 is on screen now.